In this video, we will cover the basics of REST API, talk about what contains in an HTTP request, and go over different HTTP methods. Also, make sure to stick till the end as we will learn how to make our own API call. Hey there, welcome to Automation Bro. So let's get started and talk about what is REST. So REST stands for Representational State Transfer. So it's a software architectural style that defines set of constraints or rules that you should adhere to when you are creating your APIs. And when these APIs are conformed to these architectural constraints, they are called RESTful APIs. So REST sets up standard which makes it easier to use those APIs and anyone familiar with these standards can quickly start using these APIs. Alright, so we mentioned the REST constraints. Let's quickly go over the most common ones. So the first is client server separation. So one of the constraints is that the client, let's say your browser and server shouldn't depend on each other. They should act independently and the communication should only happen using request, which only client should be able to make. So meaning server shouldn't send the client information which hasn't been requested. So basically the main principle behind this is having the separation of concerns between client and the server. Next is the uniform interface. So basically what this means is that the client and server should provide all the necessary info to each other so both can act upon the data accordingly. For example, request should contain the resource identifier that is the endpoint when making a request. Alright, so the next one is statelessness. So what this means is that the server should not store any information about the user using that API. So every time a request is made by a client, it will need to contain all the information required for server to provide you with the proper response. Even if the request is made 100 times, server wouldn't remember that, so it's client's responsibility to send all that relevant data. And then there are three more constraints that are cacheability, layered system, and code on demand. I will add a link in the description below so that you can read more about them if you're interested. Okay, so with REST, the most common and widely used means of communication is via HTTP protocol. We brought up request few times before, so let's take a look at what this request looks like. So the first we have our base URI. So this is where you're making the request from. So I have the example link over here, which is json placeholder.typeicode.com and then you have the slash to do slash API. So this is basically your base URI, which will you will pass in as part of your HTTP request. And then you have your HTTP methods. So this is what the operation you're performing. And that is get, post, put and delete. And we will come to this in a bit. And then you have your headers. This is basically the information you're passing to the client and server. So example, the authentication or providing info related to the body content. And then we have the body, which is the optional data that you provide with the request. We will look at an example of each of these in a bit. But before that, let's talk a little bit about HTTP methods. So REST HTTP method follows crude operation that is create, read, update and delete. And it maps to the HTTP methods this way. So the create maps to post, which basically creates a new resource. And then you have your read, which is get. It's most commonly used every time you access a web page, you make a get request to receive the data. And then you have update, which maps to put. It's used to update the data. For example, when editing your title or content of a blog post, you'll probably use put. And then delete is obviously to delete your data. All right, now let's take a look at a real API example to understand these topics we have discussed so far. Okay, so I'm here on the PayPal's API documentation. And if you notice here, the first request over there, it's a get request and they have provided the path to that API. And if you notice on the right, they have shown how to make that sample request. So they are using curl to do that API request, which is just a way to make an HTTP request. And then they have provided the entire URL. And over there, they also have that path, which they kind of mentioned over here. And if you notice here, they also have get, basically what they're saying that they're making a get request. And then they have the authorization as well as the content type, which are the headers we talked about. So on the left over here, they have the authorization and the content type. So in authorization, you would want to pass in some, side, some sort of token or some secret key along with your request to make sure it's secure. And then with content type, you are just mentioning that it's a JSON contact. And if you scroll down, you will see that once you make the request, you will get a similar type of sample response over here. All right, so let's scroll down even a bit more. And then this is their next call, which is the post request. And in the post, they will see a difference here that in the get, we weren't providing the body but in post, you will see that they are providing a body over here. So everything else will remain the same. You will see that it's the same call request. They're making a post request over here, passing that URL, 
and then they have the authorization as well as the content type but the difference here is they have their body that they're providing along with the post request and if you notice in their header parameter they have the same thing over here in fact a little bit additional that they're providing which is the PayPal request ID and some other information and if you notice down in the request body they have the invoice ID amount and this is basically the body that they're sending or that user might probably enter which they will send to the server okay so and then obviously you, once you do that you will get this response back which in a similar format which we saw even for a get request all right so i hope what we discussed before in terms of different headers or the path or the body is kind of making sense now and you can kind of map it to how it would look like in a real world example all right it's time to make our first api call so let's do that so i'm going to jump to this website uh, jsonplaceholder.typeico.com what this website does is basically provides you with fake online rest api for testing and prototyping so i will scroll down and you will see that they have an example over here so what they're doing is using fetch which is a web api it basically provides an interface to allow you to make a network request so we're going to use this to make an api call to this url over here and then once we make the request it will show us the response over here so before i do that what i'm going to do is right click and do inspect so that we can actually see what's happening behind the scenes then I would go to network tab and on the all and make sure it's clicked on all over here and then I will click try it so there you go if you just notice it just made an API call and but first of all we got a response over here and then we also see the request over here so we made this this was a request URL we the request method was get and the status code was 200 and if I scroll up we're gonna see more information so this was some of the response headers and as well as the request header and what we're going to do is if I click on preview, this will match exactly what we got over here. So there you go. This was basically your first API call to JSON placeholder through this website. And if you actually managed to made it this far, good job. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is click on this guide link here. And here they have provided us with basically different API calls that we can do. So we already tried the get API call. So what we're going to do now is instead do this one, which is create a resource. So let's do that. What I'm going to do first is clear this out from here. And then I will just copy this. And the reason I'm doing this because they don't have this try it button, which we had over there. But instead, what we can do is we can take advantage of fetch and put it in a console here. And that would just work fine. So what I will do is just copy this and then paste it here. And before we hit enter, let's take a look at what's happening here. So we have our obviously the URI here, and this is the post route. And then the method they're putting uh, is also basically the post and then as well as the bodies. So as we discussed with post, you need to provide a body. So that's what they're providing over here. And then they have the headers, which is the JSON type, which we're providing over here. And then once we do that, obviously we're going to get some sort of response back and they're just trying, trying to print that response over here. So let me click enter. Okay. So if you notice here, they have the title as well as the body and the ID and user ID that got back as the response. So what it just did is basically created a new post. And this was the body of that post as well as the title and the user ID. So same way, what we can do is actually change this a bit. Instead of doing title this, I will just name my own title. Uh, let's say my title, and then I will change the body, call it my body, and then I will hit enter. So there you go. This time when it came back, it's actually showing us a different one. So this time the body is basically what we put over there, as well as the title is what we put. So this way you can actually create your own API request. So we just did that and we basically create our own uh, post request. And same way, if you come in here, you can try it out for doing it with put as well as doing it with patch or delete. So I hope you understand what REST API is and how you can make a REST API call or HTTP request on your own. All right. So in the next video, we will talk about what is API testing and the advantages of doing API testing. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe to my channel to keep watching more content like this. That's it for this video, guys. I will see you in the next one.